so I thought, I, and somebody came up with, to, to me with a question this last week, one of the supporters, the monthly supporters of the show, um, and, and it, with a business question that amounted to, in a sense, how truthful should I be with the supplier, right? Um, how truthful do I need to be in business? Or uh, there's a context in which you could understand this as uh, how honest should I be in business? But of course, truthfulness with supplier employees or whatever is, is a particular application of honesty, but it's not the core and essence of honesty. So let's talk about what the core and essence of honesty are. And I'm happy, again, to take questions on this of, of particular circumstances, particular cases, how, what honesty means from personal life, business life, or whatever, or questions about anything. Uh, we do have about $150 to go to make the last piece for the third hour, uh, but we've got plenty of time to reach there. So first, what is honesty? Honesty and objectivism is a commitment to facts. It, it is a commitment to reality. It is a commitment when thinking, when being rational, which is, of course, the primary virtue in objectivism. It is a commitment to doing that on the basis of reality, on the basis of facts, on the basis of evidence. So being truthful, the most important thing about being truthful is to be truthful to yourself in everything, but in your thinking. Your thinking is your means of survival. Your thinking is your means by which you achieve your values. Your reason, your rationality is the way in which we engage with the world and we engage in problem solving and we engage in interaction with others, and, but we engage in pursuing values. Then honesty is just one taking a look at that from a particular perspective. Remember, honesty says, when thinking, when being rational, only the facts. Feelings are interesting. They're important. They tell you a lot about yourself. They're not telling you about the world out there. They're telling you about you, your reaction to the world out there. Know where your feelings stand. Honesty means think. It's a devotion to the facts, a devotion to reality. And of course, that is an essential characteristic, honesty, in that sense, essential characteristic of business. Business requires constant analysis of changing circumstances, of facts. Businesses usually get into trouble when they place uh, emotion, gut feeling, instinct above reality, above facts, above what's actually going on. Wes, thank you, really appreciate the support. Businesses often either, you know, either, you know, even cases of business fraud, even cases of business fraud, and I'm not talking about Bernie Madoff, but I'm talking about like in the old days, I don't know if you, some of you might remember WorldCom. How does business fraud often happen? Business fraud often happens not because somebody sits down and says, like Bernie Madoff did, I think, how can I steal money from my friends? How can I steal money from people? How can I get the money from my shoulders and run away? Business fraud usually happens when a CEO, when, when a CEO says to himself, yeah, the numbers this quarter were not so good. If I report the numbers were not so good. My stock price will go down, and a lot of the plans that I have, I won't be able to execute on them. And I know, deep down in my gut, I know, I, I feel it, that this quarter is just a blimp. This quarter is, you know, not real. It, it, you know, we're going to recover so much next quarter. We're going to do amazing next quarter. This sounds like Donald Trump now. We're going to have a fabulous, an amazing, the best quarter ever next quarter. So look, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fudge this quarter's numbers so that the market doesn't overreact, right? Because it's going to overreact. Because right, in the past, 
I've always reported great numbers. So I'm going to fudge them this time. Not to worry. So this time, I'll report numbers that are a little higher on the plus side, a little higher than they really were in reality. Next quarter, when I blow through the numbers and I get amazing numbers, I will put a little lower. On an average, I'll be just right. I, you know, I'm not lying. I'm not lying. I'm just fudging a little bit, but it's okay. I'll fix it next time. And this happened all the time, right? So what happens next time? Uh, you fudge it. You report false numbers. The market says, oh, good. Things are still good at this company. Next quarter happens, and things don't get better. You don't have a blowout quarter. You don't have an amazing quarter. So now you're going to have to, if you report the truth, it's going to look even worse because you're going to have to restate last quarters or take into account what happened last quarter and this quarter. Now you've got a much bigger. So you say, yeah, this is all temporary. So it's taken more than one quarter to fix. But this is temporary. There's no question. We'll fix this. So I'll fudge one more time. Last time, I promise. I promised to myself last time, next time. So they fudge again. And you can imagine this happens once, twice, three times. And at that point, it's so big that you can't hide it. And the market loses, it loses all trust in you. Your stock collapses. And then people start looking at the books. And they say, wait a minute, you fudged the numbers last three quarters. It, we fire you and off to jail you go. And that's what happened with the CEOs of WorldCom. And there was a famous case of a guy from Barings Bank who was sitting in uh, Singapore, I think, and trading the Japanese Nikkei. And he was trading Japanese futures. And he lost a lot of money. He lost a lot of money one day. And he could have reported to his bosses that he lost a lot of money. And they would have... They would have said, you know, don't do that. Bad thing. Not, yep, not good. You're not going to get a bonus this year, right? Uh, but, okay, do better tomorrow. But he didn't. He hid it from his bosses. So the next day, in order to make up for the losses, he took more risk. This time he lost again. Now he's lost a lot of money. Now maybe if he tells his bosses and reports it, he gets fired. So he doesn't. He takes even more risk, and he triples down, and he loses again. Now, not only is he fired, but he's going to jail. And this is a true story. I forget the guy's name. It was Barings Bank. I think, I think ultimately he lost so much money. Uh, it doesn't take long for you to lose a lot of money. I think so, you lost so much money that, um, that the whole company, this is an old, old British investment bank, the whole company went under. And a big part of the problem was that um, they had no control. They had taken a 24-year-old or something, put him in Singapore and letting him trade whatever he wants. And uh, the controls were completely shoddy. Uh, Nick, Leis uh, Nick Leeson was his name, Apollo Zeus tells us, and I think he's right. Anyway, that is how typical fraud happens. It happens because people don't stick to principle. I won't lie. And when the numbers are bad, I'll report bad numbers. And when the numbers are good, I'll report good numbers. And I'm not, I won't try to convince myself. I won't try to go on emotion, go and get feeling. I'll report the numbers as they are. I'm committed to honesty. I'm committed to reality. I'm committed to facts. My beliefs, my speculations about the future, not facts, not reality. So, you know, this is what, again, honesty means, a, a brutal acceptance of, of the facts and commitment to it and, and a commitment to living by that principle and, and a commitment to sometimes taking the knocks when, in the short run, when living to such a principle, you know, it, it, when it involves taking those knocks taking a hit. So, um, honesty means commitment to facts. Now, what about in how we deal with other people? And this relates also to, again, in a personal life. 
Uh, why is lying bad? Well, lying bad is because misrepresenting facts in the world out there hurts your ability, hurts other people's ability to think rationally and therefore to properly trade, properly interact in a productive way. Lying to other people is faking reality to other people, which is just as bad as faking reality to yourself and has awful consequences like the ones I just described. You, commit, you land up committing fraud and you go to jail. So lying is a faking of reality. Now, people say there's such a thing as white lies. There are certainly circumstances in which there are supposedly white lies, but you know, it really, it really is dangerous as we expand what a white lie is. Now, it's true that when you, for, for, for a lot of couples, when your wife asks you if she looks fat in this dress, it, it's true that for most couples, that's just a game. It's a dance. Nobody's expected to tell the truth. It's, it's, it's no different than, than playing a board game where you're not expected to tell the truth, right? But sometimes your wife is serious. She doesn't want to look fat in the dress. And she's looking for real advice and telling her, yeah, you, you know, you do. You, you should probably change to something else is not a bad idea. <laughs> and as a husband, you better figure out which is which. It might be a trap, but I view it more as a game. But, you know, you got to be up front. You got to figure it out and figure out when is it a game? When is it? the truth required. That takes experience and, and time, right? Uh, so uh, I, I'm not a big, I, while I think there are such things as white lies, I think the main white lie is when somebody asks you something and it's none of their business. When so, and, and it's in the context, it's not polite to say it's none of your business. When somebody uh, asks you Suddenly, when somebody's trying to steal a value from you, they don't deserve the truth. But those are the context in which lying is appropriate. When somebody is trying to get a value from you inappropriately. But other than that, interactions with other people should be honest. That is fact-based. Now, does that mean that you should tell everybody everything? That is that should you, in negotiating with your supplier, necessarily say to the supplier, all right, this is what I'm going to pay for it, and that's it. Oh, does it make sense for you to leave room for negotiation? I think it certainly makes room, makes sense to, you know, you might say, oh, this is my final offer. When you kind of, Prepare to make another offer. Again, there's a game aspect to this. There's an expectation. You're not lying by saying that. It's more like the example of the dress. Right? But you are telling the person you're negotiating with, we're getting close. <laughs> I'm not going to budge much more than this, even if I will be willing to nudge a little bit. So context really matters. But... You know, you know, the case, the example I had was, um, or, or, or take, I, I don't want to give the exact example, but uh, I remember an example I had with uh, a, um, uh, a company in, uh, in the tech business that I was doing seminars, business ethics seminars, and, and this always came up because the question was, how truthful should I be with my supplier? Right. So my product is runs perfectly up to a certain tolerance. There's certain tolerance beyond which it doesn't. And do I need to tell them? And the answer to that is, it depends. Is that acceptable in the industry that everybody knows? Well, it's up to a tolerance, but it's not under any circumstances, then you don't have to specify. They can ask. 
And you can either give them information or tell them that's a trade secret or whatever. You're not going to lie about it. You're not going to deceive them, but you might not tell them. That is, there's no obligation in life or in business to give people all the information. Everything that you know about something. How are you feeling today, you're on? Well, actually, you know, my knee hurts and my hip and I've got a bad back and, oh, my shoulder is giving me a lot of trouble. Uh, you know, and, and, and you, I, you know, I could spend a half an hour letting, giving you in great detail the exact everything, what I feel today. You didn't ask me and you don't want to know and it's none of your business. So you, you've got to calibrate what you tell people to what they need to know, what's important they know, what is important for their decision making to know. So for example, if I'm selling you something, I don't have to tell you everything about the product, but I should tell you everything that I think is relevant and I should answer any question you have, truthfully. But I don't need to tell you every last little thing that's going on. I mean, the, the, the question I had last this week was more about, there's a situation where I, I, I you know, the. The company cannot play its supplier the full price of what it promised a few years ago in a contract to pay. The reality is the market won't stand that price. And, you know, you could fudge an answer and make up something and I can't pay you. Bottom line is I can't pay you that amount. Or you could go to the supplier, and I think this is the right way to do it, and say, look, here's the circumstances. I, I, I can't take on this shipment because then I'm wiped out. I, I, I lose my business because the market won't tolerate this price that exists today. I don't want you to lose your business by me not paying you anything on it either because that's what would happen if I just walk away or if I file for bankruptcy or something like that. Why don't we sit down and, and figure out what's fair here? And let me tell you what I think the market can tolerate and therefore how much I could pay you where I still make something and where you get a significant amount back, even though it's not as much as you expected. So the idea is let's, let's talk about the context. Let's talk about the situation and let's take what looks like a lose-lose situation. Let's take what looks like something where nobody wins and turn it into a win-win, not as big of a win for me or you as we expected, but the best deal we can have, the most win-win we can create right now. Um, and I think that is the right approach to take. That is, be upfront. Sh uh, you know, uh, be open about what's going on. Be communicative on that which is related to this particular transaction. I don't believe in buyer beware. I mean, there's a sense in which that's true. But a buyer who asks questions should get truthful answers. And if you're going to lie to a buyer, you're being dishonest and you will ultimately go out of business. You will actually lose in the end. You will create a lose-lose situation. So... Honesty should always play a role. And honesty, and it should be in context. That is, when interacting with other people, the amount of information you provide them should depend on the particular context that's involved, particular situation, what's at stake, and what is needed to know. What's that term in intelligence? Need to know on a need to know basis. Yeah, what do they need to know? And what they need to know should be provided accurately and without any question. And even if, by the way, even if that information would lead you to a short-term loss, you will gain in the long run. You never gain in the long run by lying and cheating and deceiving. You don't gain long run financially and you don't gain long run uh, spiritually. So 
uh, figuring out how to create win-win situations by with honest communication with suppliers, the same as employees, right? You expect certain things of employees or you expect a certain future. You want to be able to be as upfront as you can be. You can't reveal information that is not appropriate to reveal about what is going on or about, you know, the plans for the future. But you want to give them enough heads up so that they are motivated and they uh, feel, think that they are part of the venture. The same with customers, the same with suppliers, the same with the entire supply chain that you're engaged in. Everybody should get the relevant information. The relevant information should always be truthful. It doesn't always have to be complete because completion might not be relevant or completion might subvert what you and they are trying to do. So it's not always easy to figure out where that line is. But when you cross it, it's pretty clear. And warning signs should be, you know, warning lights should be going off and warning signs in your head should be going off and you should be distressed and you should be worried, you know, when you get to the point where Oh no, I crossed the line. That's not good. Something bad is that that that's really not good. <laughs> All right. So uh, honesty is a winner. Honesty is the path to generating wealth and it's a path to generating a good life. You cannot achieve wealth and a good life without a commitment to reality, without a commitment to facts. Honesty, you cannot achieve real happiness, real wealth, without being fundamentally honest. And here again, I, I refer to honesty in the broad sense of a commitment to fact to yourself and to others. But to others, it's w the facts that are relevant. To you, all facts are relevant. All facts that are relevant are relevant, right? <laughs> all facts that the context requires are relevant. So in a sense, it's for both parties, it's, it's context determined what is relevant. And given what is relevant, you should be always honest about it. Explicitly lying and using lying, lying to achieve something, to achieve a value will always backfire. It will backfire in the corruption of your own mind. It'll backfire in that people will discover it and not want to deal with you. Um, I don't remember if I told you the story of uh, the same group that I, uh, tech company that I was talking about honesty with. I gave this example of, you know, the guy working late um, at the company and, um, well, not working late at the company, going out drinking with his buddies and coming home and telling his wife, well, you know, I had to work late at the company. Sorry, sorry, I'm late. I, I, I was working, right? How can she object to that, right? And this happened a lot. And I said, look, if you do that, think about how much lying you have to do in order to get away with that one lie, right? It seems like one simple lie. But the reality is, that you're lying to your wife, but you also have to tell your buddies that you lied to your wife so that they know not to talk about the night you went drinking in front of her, and that if she asks them about that night, they know that you were working. So they have to be in on it. Now, they have to remember your lie, and they have to remember to lie in the right context. And then you have to remember on which evening you lied, what the lie was about, what, I mean, I often say that as I get older, I find, I find uh, remembering what I did last week hard enough, that remember reality hard enough. But if you over, if you load that on, now I have to remember what actually happened and my lying about it, I just don't have the capacity to retain all that 
And as a consequence, I'm going to screw up, right? So lying leads to more lying. It leads to massive self-destruction, self-destructive energy exertion on things that are self-destructive. Um, the funny thing is, I gave this example. I, and, and one of the things I said was, you know, you, you have to tell your boss, just in case your wife, and, and somebody raised their hand, she says, no, this really happened. We'd go out drinking, and the guy, this guy was lying to his wife, and then the wife called up the boss one day, and she said, how come my husband is working extra hours? What do you have against him? Why is he staying over and, and working late? You know, all these nights, this is ridiculous. And the boss went, no, he's not. He's not working late. Now, you can imagine the kind of trouble you would get with your wife on that. Now, try to convince the wife that you went out drinking. Now she thinks you're having an affair or who knows what you're doing. Once you've lied like that, how do you recover from that? How does she not know that the lying is just going to go on and on and on? And, and how does she know what reality actually is? How does she know how to trust you and when to trust you? I don't know what that is. So um, lying is incredibly self-destructive. And honesty is simple because honesty is about reality. It's about fact. It's about what actually happened. The only thing you have to overcome sometimes in being honest with somebody is the emotion of, I don't know, upsetting them, making them feel bad, you feeling bad. But that's emotions. And reality and reason have to trump emotions. Facts, reality, honesty, that's, that's what should guide your life. That is the principle if you want to live a good life. So we all know reason, rationality, is the way to, is, 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 is our means of survival, our means of thriving, and our means to achieving happiness. That entails a ruthless commitment to truth, a ruthless commitment to facts, a ruthless commitment to reality. And that's basically what the virtue of honesty means.